Yo, welcome to another episode of the Larry O Show. As always, got my co-host to the left. What's going on, everybody? It's John Phelps. <laughs> and I'm Larry O. This is an FL Studio podcast. We talk about everything FL Studio and music production related. Mm -hmm. Every week, we give away every one of my FL Studio courses from youhelpme.com. All you got to do to enter the contest and enter the giveaway is listen for the keyword or the key phrase and comment it down on YouTube in the comment section, and we will pin five winners every single week. That's right. Make yep. sure you drop your comments when you hear that keyword over on YouTube. Yeah, so every single one of my courses, those are melody courses, mixing, recording, beat making, you name it, it's in there. It's every single one of my courses. You name it. You name it. <laughs> <laughs> this week, I, I, I thought, uh, you know, again, on my ride here, what to do for the podcast. One of these days, I'm going to get my shit together and we're going to actually have like a script. Maybe not a script, but like an outline again. Yeah. Like go back to that whole thing. Like we kind of um, just winging it, you know. It, to yeah. a degree, we wing it yeah. for y'all. We like. But I mean, to there's just so much to fresh. talk about that I can literally think of a topic on my way here because I have a catalog in my brain of like what kind of videos have done decent, what like what producers are talking about in the community, what struggles producers have. So that's mm. why I'm thinking like on my way here. I'm like, all right, what can I bring up that I think will be beneficial to the community? And this week, I'm thinking we could talk a little bit about chords, not mm -hmm. so much the technicality of chords, more so the ease of coming up with chords in FL Studio, because FL Studio gives you so many ways to come up with chords and chord progressions. Talking about chords, right? Yeah, chords. Chords. Yeah. Chordcast. <laughs> <laughs> talking about chords? Hell yeah. So, I mean, there's a million different ways to make chords in FL Studio, so I yep. think that this, this episode will be good for anybody who's kind of trying to figure it out, because you don't necessarily need to know your music theory. Maybe we'll get a little bit into that, but we don't know much ourselves so we yep. luckily have a bunch of tools through fl studio to help us on this journey here. yeah because i mean if you've been a follower and a listener for a while you know um i don't have an extended background like in music theory at all whatsoever yeah I don't the stuff that i've learned is literally from fl studio so i like i can find my way around i can name the keys on a keyboard I, very basic yeah i know what a triad is I know what a major chord is versus a minor chord. Mm. When you start getting into sevens, ninths, and stuff like that, I get a little bit confused <laughs> what right, we're talking right. about. Um, I can't, like, name the keys in every scale. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't, like, oh, what's the – in the key of, you know, C sharp minor, what are the what are the keys in that scale? I can't, right. I can't do that. Luckily, FL Studio is there to help. We can go with the first one. A lot of people know about this one. I think it's been talked about a while uh, – for a while, especially – Within the last six months or so, because it's a brand new feature in FL. If you haven't um, heard about this feature, I think uh, it's it's super beneficial. And it's not so much um, how to play chords, but it kind of creates and generates chords for you. I won't touch on this one too much because I think we did a lot on it in the past. Um, I'll drop like a link or I'll tag it in this video somewhere where I go like deeper in on the chord generator. It's Yeah, so it's called the chord generator. If you're inside Piano Roll, you hit Alt and P and it pops right up. And you can create all different kinds of chords. You can chop them up, make it more like stabby, change the vibe of it. You can get into the more advanced stuff here. Um, you could choose your key and your scale, major, minor, and all these other things right here. Uh, tons and tons of different things that you could do. You could change the count, stick to even numbers. I mean, no rules, but even numbers for the most part. And then you find a chord progression that you like. You hit accept. Again, you can go into every one of these blocks and change it up, switch it up, customize it. You can lock them. So say you want to keep these first three chords, but you want to generate a whole new progression. Hit generate. It saves those first three chords. Uh, there's a lot to do with this, but like I said, we touched on it in the past. You can go back and uh, really go in depth with this. This is a great tool. And it also helps you understand because you can hit accept. And then as you can see, you got it in the piano roll. You got all this, all these chords inside the piano roll where you can physically see them. You can understand what's going on here. It tells you the key, the scale that it's in. B flat minor natural. Aeolian? Is that how you say it? Aeo? Aeolian? <laughs> <laughs> I, I never knew how to say that. Aeolian. I think that sounds about right. Right? I think I've heard people say it and they've saying Aeolian. But yeah. And just like that, there was no, like, listening through to see what went together. It just kind of uses AI to generate and go through, you know what I mean? It's yep. a quick, 
quick, easy way to get things started, you know? Yep. And the, the other cool thing is uh, this is another new feature, and you can kind of add to this if you want to add a top melody on it. And you, you get stuck with, like, all right, so I don't know, like, what notes to put in on top of this that are going to sound good because, I've you know, I've clicked through before and it, you know, nothing sounds <laughs> right. If you go up to this little tool right here, it knows and it remembers that you're in B-flat minor. Right-click on it. You can hit snap incoming MIDI and snap to scale. Now, mm -hmm. any note that you throw in, you see how it just skipped over D, went to C-sharp, C, skipped over B, A-sharp. G sharp, F sharp, F. So then creating a top melody is going to be super easy like that. You just listen to it. Just like that, everything just, you can hear it. It's not the greatest right now, but like you can hear how very little ease goes into that. And mm. you get something that at least sounds like it's in tune with everything else. Right. You're not guessing and you're actually learning. So right now, like I know I'm in B flat minor and I know that these keys and you do this so much and repetitively that you'll end up just kind of taking in that information like all right i know b flat minor i know that a sharp is in there g sharp's in there f sharp f is in there uh you know that these keys are in that scale so it's just a really super useful tool to use that mixed with that whole like snap to midi um for the, sure another one that you can play chords with one key well actually there's a couple ways to do this the first way I ever learned, and it was probably before the second feature was out, was in my favorite plugin of all time, Patcher, as uh, like a VST. So you got to open it up inside the channel rack right there. Mm. You go into the presets, and I think there's a couple that do this in here, but specifically the one that I found first was Yoda Saw. You open up Yoda Saw, and it looks like this. Have you ever seen this thing? <laughs> no. No? Hell no. Bro, like... E one chord key. I mean, one key chords. So you got to put on type to keyboard here. Let me lower it a little bit. I'm going to blow my eardrums out. <laughs> she. That's crazy. <laughs> That's wild. Get you some Yoda song. I kind of like that progression too. Yeah, that's that's sick, fire. Man. yeah. The only thing with that's that, bananas. right? So, like, let's say we're gonna go record that. We want to record some notes, not audio. Uncheck everything, and then we want to count in. And then let's say two, three, four. Nope. Hold on. I had it on keys. Do it again. Take two. Stop it. The only thing with that, as you can see, it's it doesn't it doesn't print the chords. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. only printing the, the notes that you're hitting on the keyboard. Right. I which got cannot be beneficial in the sense of you learning what's going on right there. Mm. So I like it, but for that reason, I'm like, eh. The other reason I'm like, eh, is well, because a quick little side note. So yeah. if you have that sound going and mm -hmm. it's playing chords you can analyze it and get the midi breakdown correct so you could drop it into like an fl keys vst analyze the uh the the playthrough of that yoda saw and have it drop as like the midi progression into fl keys uh, they have a uh they have a like a breakdown tool like that right kind of Kinda, but not really. That you could do it with Wave Candy. Remember we tried. We, I don't think it can't. It can't get the chords. I've done it before. There's something in. Hold on. Where is? Or maybe it? in Newtone. Like Newtone might. Uh, see. Roughly tell. 
It's uh, it's not new tone. No, it's in it's in the piano roll. I'm pretty sure. And it's it and it will detect roll. the chords that you're playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Or Let me burn, see you if can do I can, burn to MIDI. What is it? Burn to MIDI. If you do burn to MIDI, uh, I believe this is or a convert. Workaround. What does that say right above it? What does that say? Create direct wave instrument. No, no, it's not that one. There's uh, replace. Oh, there's something. There's something where you can grab the. It, it it works for analyzing the sound, like the signal, so it'll hear the sound. I don't think it'll do it if you uh, just like analyze the MIDI of it. Can't remember where where the it only is, thing but there's that like I'm a hidden about, there's a hidden joint. The only thing that I'm thinking about is this one called Wave Candy. If you throw that on there, I mean, you got to do a whole bunch of shit. Mm -hmm. You got to open this thing. Yeah, up. I've never used Wave Candy before. You got to change a whole bunch of settings. You got to change it to Spectrum mm -hmm. or Meter or Vector Scope. I can't remember. Like that. But you gotta change these settings. So like see how you can see these frequencies coming through? If you mess with these settings enough, they become like um it, it gets rid of some of gotcha. like that background stuff. Yeah, That's there's the like only way a, I really knew about it. There's like a convert to MIDI, um, like convert audio to MIDI. You might do it in um like Edison or one of those similar tools where you like you highlight it. Right click it. Yeah, you it could probably convert, convert to it to audio. Yeah. So you'd have to print that to audio. And, and then, then like with chords, it's not like hundred percent accurate. With single notes, it's yeah, accurate. It'll get it. The chords you might get like, you know, yeah. two notes out of it at a time. Um, shout out, I'm not really sure by the time this episode drops or whatever, but I'm doing a video for a friend of mine, a friend of producer, like influencer, YouTuber, Navi D. You ever heard of Navi D? Mm -mm. Dope, bro, dope, dope channel mm. for FL Studio stuff. So good. He reached out and was like, yo, I just I'm dropping this new plugin. And it's based kind of loosely off of like that wave candy idea. Mm. But he made a plugin that does that, that grabs the chords that's from cool. any sample, right? Yeah, that's and sick. not only that does it like grab the chords like nicely, like where you can see them like very vibrantly. You can like click on the notes, right? And drag and then get the MIDI, just drag the MIDI right out. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it's it's so good. There you go. Um, so I'm like, I think later, I think I'm dropping the video on IG like in a couple of weeks, but it's so good, bro. And um, yeah, so that's the, with Yoda Saw, that's one thing that I don't like about it. And the other thing is honest, obviously that sound is just that sound. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you could go back if you want to go into the, the back, the back end of this and find out which plugins are making that sound maybe gms it looks like harmless is in here another gms another harmless mm. so that's where the sound is coming from you go in there and you can change the, the presets to mm. a different patch and you can have a different instrument playing if you'd like but i mean that's just something that i thought was really cool helpful you could change the key around you got all these settings like slides it sounds kind of crazy. Resonance. You got all such uh, cool stuff in there. And then I think maybe, I don't know, like after I found that out, maybe a couple of years down the line, I don't honestly don't know when they started this one, but this one's fire, bro. If you go to the type to keyboard, right, where I clicked on a little while ago so you, I could play stuff on here and you right click it. If you right click it. Mm hmm. You got these options in here. There you go. Normally, it's on layout piano, which mm -hmm. it's just laid out like a normal piano, pretty much. I mean, as much as you can on a keyboard, right? But if you go down and you go to major chord map or minor natural chords or minor natural chord map, click on it. Now, when you hit a key on here, mm. one key chords, and it tells you the chords that you're hitting. So when you record that, it's actually going to record the, the full MIDI of that entire chord. It's a triad chord. So it's not, I don't think you can like go in there and choose a ninth, play, have it play a ninth chord or anything. You might be able to, but it gets you started on the right foot. So then you could just, Hit record. Right. And then you can use that same trick where 
you put it to scale. You put yep. the piano roll to exactly. scale, and then just add your uh, add your notes either up top or up bottom to make you know ninth and seventh chords, yep. whatever those are. Because I think the ninth and the sevens is when it like introduces like two new notes, or you know it makes it four four notes in a chord, five notes in a chord. But you can you know yep use that tool. Yeah. So right now, snap to MIDI is still on, and because I wrote a chord progression in there. Pay don't pay attention to this B uh, flat minor in there because it's just um, remembering it from when I used. If I get rid of that, there we go. It's just remembering it from when I used the chord generator. It right. throws it in there like it's just a marker. Really, you can add your own markers if you want to, but yeah. So if any chord progression that you put in there, and you go to that snap to scale and snap incoming MIDI, it's gonna detect what chord or what scale you're in by the chords that are in there mm -hmm. so it's going to know where to lock you in at right so i could just drop a note who knows what that is a, a, a ninth or a seventh i don't know but like it sounds good and you can really just beef the chords up and have that same idea Now, when you grab one of those triads and move it down, will it uh, snap everything into the notes? Yep. Nice. How crazy is that? There you go. It knows that it's. It knows that it needs to drop it into a specific chord that's in the scale. Right. So you want to try out a different chord? Just take that triad. You know, mm -hmm. move it around. And then, you know, have fun with it. So now when you drop in a uh, a sample from from the cloud or whatever, mm -hmm. it'll snap it into whatever key that you're working in there? You should know. I in that, in that case, you have to know what scale you're in right now. Oh, I see. So by using... The way I, I kind of like... It pro, by process of elimination right now, since I just kind of like threw that in there, and I don't know music theory like that, I'm not 100% positive on what the scale is that I'm in right now. But a lot of times I'll look at the root note. The root note might tell you because the root note is a bass chord of an F minor. Mm -hmm. or, yeah, so this is an F. No, wait, that's an F major. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so th this might be F major, this progression. So then if I wanted to go to cloud and audition samples that are in F major, you would just go to sounds like make sure you go all the way to like default with no filters and then go to key, and then you'd put F major. And then it's going to scrub through everything that's F major, and it will automatically lock the tempo in. So now I can play stuff that's in F major. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> amplified. <laughs> That's kind of, oh man, if you sync that up, the only issue that I have with FL Cloud is that I want to hit play and have the the progression play that I just played and the sample audition at the same, on the one, on the, on the drop, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I can never get it to match right away. I'll always like hear it like a click off and then be like, oh, it's going to sound good. This will sound good. It's enough though to save me a ton of time and For not sure. have to drag every sample in it's enough where i can get it to like that but i love i i don't know the combination between fl cloud now and and piano roll and For just sure. everything is so good no need to use splice that's no. for sure splice uh, speaking about splice bro splice actually had uh, had copied oh this is some good like producer news and i know this is fl studio podcast we don't want to talk about the thoughts but splice <clears throat> knows and another dog from personas personas i don't know Merck, if you uh in you know about personas now how they're like on the come up they got studio one version seven mm. they're on seven now or something or something there uh, but it has splice in it you know why it has splice in it because they got fl cloud they created fl cloud mm. and they were like 
damn, we need something to compete with this. For sure. Which means, hey, I mean, that's good for uh, Studio One users, though. That's mm -hmm. good. And mm -hmm. I know sometimes in the comments I see them, and I, I watch, like, Devon's podcast, the Healthy Devon guys, and audio nerds, and they have a lot of Studio One users as well. So I'm sure that the Studio One users are, are pretty happy. Mm. Um, NFL Studios users can be happy, too, knowing that, you know, we're at the... We're at the top of the food chain and we're like, and we're getting, you know, <laughs> for sure. All the eyeballs are on FL Studio and what they're doing because it's innovative. It's game changing. Look mm -hmm. at, I mean, for real. Yeah. You're making these other dogs do the same thing and coming out. And not only that, bro, yeah. they're just, they're taking every detail, right? So that not only did <clears> they do that with Splice to compete with FL Cloud, right? They are doing a deal with TuneCore instead of FL Studio doing a deal with DistroKid. See? So Studio One has a deal with Splice, Crazy. and they have a deal with TuneCore. Crazy. Same as FL having a deal with DistroKid and having their own cloud. Yeah. I think FL Studio still has the upper hand because yeah. they created their own cloud for the sounds. Right. For this this alone sets FL Studio apart from any other DAW out there, mm -hmm. hands down, hands down. Because the fact that it's a in fully integrated cloud system to like source from. And how implementable it is with like the tempo locking and the you know all that is crazy. So yeah. and the fact that it wasn't a thing before then is surprising. Like it's crazy. I think Splice had something called um, I might be butchering it, but they had some kind of plugin that you would put inside your DAW, right? And you could would it lock into tempo though? It would lock into tempo. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So maybe FL took inspiration from that sort of thing when they made the cloud, but still, bro, still, it's just funny. It's it's crazy to see that Personas has implemented and done a deal with Splice, TuneCore. Mm. They did a bunch of other stuff. I, I I've heard and seen they got a, a pretty good piano roll type of thing going on. Yeah. Yeah, people rant and rave about it, bro. People say really good things about it that are because you know what? I felt uh, I mean um Studio One was like free. It would come with every single piece of gear that I got. If it was Personas gear, bro, <laughs> I would get a CD ROM disc and it would be Studio One. I'm like, what the hell is this shit? Chuck that. <laughs> <laughs> get this shit out of here, bro. <laughs> Frisbee right across the room. Shoom. Smash it into the wall. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, that's. I mean, go back to yeah. So let's hear. Let's hear what we got going on here, y'all. Because something tells me these two are out of uh, out of key with each other. I. They sound like they're in key, but it's just like a. It's just a, a frequency blending kind of thing. But I don't know. I may have one headphone in right now. And sometimes they just don't sync up, but like I feel like that's it's it's the right key, but it's just some things work, some things don't. You'd have to pitch it around, EQ the lows out of it, or EQ the highs out of it, get it to fit. Like how we did with those harmonies last week, mm. right? We were coming up with harmonies. That was last, yeah, that was last week. We did the harmonies. It might stuff. be it might be F minor, could be. It might be F sharp minor, F minor, or F sharp minor. Yeah. Oh no, wait, that's why I'm an idiot. I put F minor and not F sharp major. I'm an idiot. I did F major, not F sharp major, like a dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you would essentially take this and um, move it up three cents or whatever, right? <laughs> it's it's normally D sharp minor. So if you went like this, here's a little bit of. I just reset it, so now it it is. It's actually. It's actually D sharp minor. I think. So if I wanted to put it in, it's too much. Because I would have to know that that's a that's a music theory thing, bro. Like I would look up. Eh, it's a good thing to talk about. Why not? So I would. This is how I would do it, bro. That's how I do it. So we're in major, right? Say we're in, we're in F sharp major. I would type in F. Um, no, not at F sharp. Where's the sharp? F sharp major minor relative. It is D sharp minor. And it. All right. So it is. It, it is already in its uh, relative. Wow, that's crazy that FL Cloud did that. Mm. 
It knew. That's nuts, bro. So wait a minute. I put I put F I put F sharp major in here for the scale, right? Mm -hmm. For the key. And it gave me a sample that was D sharp minor because it knows that the relative minor of F sharp major is D sharp minor. What? Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that's crazy. All right, that's even crazier. All right, I like it. So now I would just probably have to go up one 100 cents to get to the F sharp or whatever. Yeah. All right. Let's go back to the chords that we... <laughs> Let's go back to the different chords. You're gonna, you're gonna take a listen? Yeah. No. I'm deleting, I'm deleting all. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. It worked. <laughs> it, it, trust me. It worked. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so that's, uh, that's another way to do chords. Another way, if you want to get a little bit more manual with it and you want to actually type in. And a lot of these things they came up with before they it, things got easier. Like with that whole play chords with one key in here. Yep. Like that made it easy, gradually easier. And I think it all... A lot of it stemmed from this one that I'm about to show, too. So let me just put this back to the way it was. Layout. Where the hell is it? Layout piano. Make sure. That messes me up sometimes, too. I'll be on that, and it'll save it, and it'll remember it. Even the next time I open up FL. I got Yeah. And I'm, like, going to play something. I'm like, what the hell is going on right now? <laughs> Nothing is in key. No, I'm like, yo, what's going on? Um, but if you go into the piano roll, and you go to this little button right here. Stamp. Oh, yeah. You could stamp in chords manually, like Old Faithful here. Yeah, if I want to put a major chord in there, click major. I want to go to C major. Bam. C major chord, instant. Mm -hmm. And the way I know that it's a major chord or a minor chord is like you can count. No, oh, this is probably, this is inverted, actually. It's C a C major. Shop. Yeah, I put one up, I think. Oh, that's because I have snap. Zoop. There we go. So it doesn't remember it. If you want to turn it on constantly, see how it says only one? Mm -hmm. You could do an automatic chord, or I can hit right-click major. So now I think it's... No, it's still only one. I think you got to turn it off, right? Just yeah, turn it off. That's kind of the that's pain in the is. neck about the, the stamp tool. <clears throat> but now it's on. You just... Now I think, yep. So now all these chords are... Major chords. <laughs> it's not like a vibrato on there. Right. Yeah, so those are a good handful of ways that you can learn how to create chord progressions, create chord progressions instantly using the chord generator, playing chords <clears throat> with one key using that Yoda Soft feature, or the type to piano over here putting it on major chord map or minor natural chord map. I wish there was other ways um, and other things in here to do it, but they just kind of kept it basic. you got minor natural chord map or major chord map. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's time for the keyword or the key phrase. Why not make it uh, chords? Because we probably said chords about 15,000 times in this episode already. <laughs> chords. So it'll be hard to find with AI <clears throat> if you're trying to find the word chords yeah, in this episode. You you're going to find you're going to be skipping Clever all around. Clever ones, yep. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so again, if you missed it in the beginning of the episode, if you comment that keyword, key phrase down, uh, chords down in the comment section here on YouTube, you'll be entered it into the weekly giveaway that we do where you're going to win. Five people will win every single one of my FL Studio courses from youhelpme.com. Right on. Yeah. So, so I, think I think, like, the last, the last known tool in creating your chords, and this is one that I use frequently, is... Uh, Listening in context, right? So you have like a sample or you have other sort of elements that you want to harmonize with on some piano chords. Start with one note mm. and then just stack them. Yeah. <laughs> stack them notes. See that's which all, notes. That's how I did it. Because <clears throat> that's all all a chord is is a, is more than uh <laughs> more than two notes. Yeah, right? <laughs> for real. More than one note, really, because you can have like some chords that are just but like a a strict the strict you know, kind of ruling on it is that like what a triad is the beginning of mm -hmm. your chords, your chord journey right there. And I would just say, find a note that sounds good. Maybe if you need to, if you're working with a sample, you need to fine tune using the sampler um, and add one note, find another one that sounds good, nice. find a third one that sounds good. Yep. 
And before you know it, you've got a chord that is like, you know, a, a B minor, B minor, yeah. natural thing, whatever, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, that's that's just like a, a truly like creative way to kind of do it. And, and if some of these, like maybe, for instance, you don't know about all these tools that we're teaching you guys about, another way to get just started is like just trial and error just trial and error experiment you know experiment yep. have fun with it back in my day <clears throat> when when shit sounds interesting that's usually a good sign you know mm -hmm. that's the only thing that like i will say about all these tools and all these tools are great but it's hard to get like a truly like weird thing right out the box if mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like my favorite beats are just like these these weird kind of things that you kind of almost stumble upon by accident so anytime that you can introduce an accident into your beats, I recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a Just shot. keep messing around. Yeah. Next time you accidentally pencil something in, press play. Don't shoot down. Yeah. Don't <clears throat> shoot down any random ideas that you have. That right. You get. Yeah. Like that was one thing like that I love like working in the studio, like with you on a lot of stuff was just like random ideas. On yeah. The, and we'd spend like a half an hour on <clears throat> One little thing and then be like, ah, nah, it doesn't sound that good. Right. Keep, maybe mute it. Maybe it'll sound good at another time or whatever. But right. like we sat there and just tried things. Yeah. And yeah. another, another thing is like <clears throat> the chord, parts of the chord might work at certain sections of the song. Mm -hmm. So like listen to the loop and be like, oh, I really like something about that. Like get better at el uh, identifying elements that you like and dislike and kind of like isolating each one from each other. So like, oh, there's like, there's a sour note in there that doesn't work. So I'm going to go in and take that one little MIDI line out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes like, for instance, when we went through just now and had the 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 loop going with the piano, even if I, if, if you told me these are the elements that you have to make a beat with right now, I would still be able to do it mm -hmm. because what I would say is, all right, I'd listen, doesn't sound good there, take it out there. Sounds good there. Keep there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like where it sounds good, keep it. And where yeah. it don't sound good, take it out. Yep. And it's as simple and there's so as many that. options. Yeah. You just have to know. Again, I think it goes back to like having to know your DAW. Yes. In order to have more tools to create with. Yeah. Because you, like you said, if you had only that chord progression and that sample mm. and you had to make those two work, mm -hmm. you could 100% make it work. You could have a full melody with, the, with just those two. Right. But, like, not saying that leaving those as is, but saying chopping a sample here, chopping one little piece out there, time stretching it so it's For longer, real. like reversing a section, yeah. taking that chord progression or transposing the whole thing, mm -hmm. and then maybe stacking it and transposing another uh, unique sample on top of it that harmonizes with that. Like, there's so many, so pitch many it. options. Yeah, pitch it, it differently, yeah. speed it up. Yep. You know what I mean? One thing to remember about, like, pop music and, and stuff that you're likely sampling if you're sampling is it it repeats so sections of a song will theoretically be able to like line up at the one so if you start on the one here you have that a section your b section might be somewhere else in the song where you know the next one kind of works yep. or like halfway through that measure you kind of start that as the one you know what i mean and and measure just means bars <laughs> you know what i mean yep. measure just is a music theory way of saying bars so, you know, line stuff up in your in your process, you know, like refine your taste. That's the thing that like no amount of like AI or like um, updates will really help you as a producer get is like your taste. You know what I'm saying? The only thing that the tools help with is, and it's a big thing, is helping you get your ideas out quicker. Yeah. You know what I mean? With less like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yep. And it can they can help you like create some different ideas and different accidents. Yeah, exactly. So you'd be playing different. a sample in there, that, like in, for instance, in FL Cloud, you'd be playing a sample that you clicked on by accident and just so happened to sync a certain way. Right. And it didn't sync on the one, like I was saying. Yeah. But it synced off grid, and then but that's how I want to hear it now. Yeah, exactly. Let me drop it in there, but I'm gonna drop it in off grid. Exactly. Like stupid things like that. Like mm -hmm. that happens all the time, just from messing around with stuff. That's Some, it. Sometimes I'll legit like I'll hear something that I know I won't be able to like put it in the playlist a certain way or I won't be able to like replicate how it's playing through right now. So I'll just take Edison, throw it on the like the master or whatever whatever Record track it. and just grab it, drop it in like that. Yep. Because that's how I know it's like solidified into yep. what I was hearing. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That's that's like 
you know, that's the power of pine saw right there. <laughs> <laughs> we call that the power of pine saw, Leo. So many Get ways. Get a whiff of that. Yep. <laughs> Bro, I thought I was going to do um, an instant of uh, it. Go back to, we talked about this before we started recording, but I was talking about going back and doing a segment that we did um, a while back. We haven't done it in a while called Guess That Plugin. But I think we're kind of like running out of <laughs> you time. Know I don't wanna, you love it. I, I don't want to keep this episode going too, too long. Mm -hmm. And I think that will if we do mine and then yours. We got to so like prize that. So yeah. next week. So next week, I think we do it. We start it off or we make it a thing or topic because I think a lot of people loved it. They played along. Mm -hmm. It had a lot to do with the keyword, the key phrase. Like there was just we had a lot of fun with that. So I think it's been a while now to the point where we can bring it back do it again and not have like and even if we end up using a plugin that we did before it's it's cool because it's it's been a bit now mm -hmm. and um kind of a refresher on that on For that sure. segment i love that segment so that was a next good week, segment people we're gonna people do that follow up in the comments with it too yep. that's yeah. always mad fun yep be like i have no clue like yep. i love that one yeah it's like engaging people were you know even get guessing the the patches so not only the plugin i know like yeah. oh i know that's <laughs> i know that's sakura and i know that's the bell preset blah 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 like people knew the yeah. preset bro which is kind of wild we got some mvps for real we got some yep. people who really know most yeah. valuable producer right <laughs> yeah <now>. that's yeah. <laughs> good <laughs> so yeah with that being said i think we're gonna save that segment for next week right let us know what you think. You want to see that segment or something different next week as well as that because we can do multiple things that won't take up the whole episode. Let us know in the comment section here on YouTube and IG. Um, if you want to drop any plugs, anything got, you got going on, go for it, bro. Hey, man, just chilling, just chilling, working on like a bunch of new music as always, getting into just the flow of the studio. Like got some sick beats by the way producers i'm a rapper as well so if you want to hear my voice over some of your own production follow up in the dms i'm an approachable guy <laughs> i'm a real approachable he likes guy. collaboration yeah no for real but you know hit me up but anyways yeah been in the studio just having fun got some shows lined up got some you know some plans for 2025 Dope. so Dope. we chilling we chilling all right yeah so that being said, if you haven't already, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and as always, share this with a friend if you, you get, get me. me.